My name is David Laurie Vanderbeek. I'm the Constitution Party candidate for governor of the state of Nevada in 2014. And uh, I just want to make sure that everyone understands that they have uh, full permission to copy and repost this video as long as you're faithful to the uh, message that's here and you don't manipulate it. Um, it is a fact that uh, many of my subscribers get kicked off and uh, even though they're active subscribers, they're not uh, dead accounts and uh, view totals and the like accounts are, are held back. And that's okay, that's part of this fight, uh, but I want you to to take the this message very seriously and understand that censorship is real and it occurs in different ways. In this uh, video, I want to give a strong acknowledgement to all the police and military and the people in our federal government that are honoring their oath to the Second Amendment rights of the people and I'm going to not address that group. I'm not speaking to police and military and employees in federal agencies that are upholding their oath to the Constitution. So if you are an oath keeper and, and someone who respects the Constitution and you serve in the law enforcement, then this video is not for you. The police that I'm referring to this video are, uh, when I use the term police, I'm using it broadly to include all levels of law enforcement. It could be at the town level, the county, the state, the city. It could be DHS, FBI, TSA, any of the alphabet federal agencies. It could be the IRS. Uh, so police in this video, I'm referring to the law enforcement that are actively engaged in assisting Obama in the destruction of the Constitution and in the infringement of the Second Amendment rights of Americans. Uh, so again, I'm not addressing all police, uh, I'm addressing those who are violating or are committed to violating their oath to the Second Amendment. And um, it is time, it is now time for police and law enforcement and federal officials and agents to step forward and state your position on the Second Amendment publicly and within your places of employment in the government. I recently put up a, a video about the Oath Keeper's Oath as well as my oath and in terms of when I will fire on fellow Americans. Because one of the issues is that comes up often with law enforcement is that you put on a uniform, you put on a badge, and you think that you're God. And you think that because of that, that your way, it's your way or the highway. And I'm here to tell you that uh, that is delusional and that attitude is about to get you killed. Um, we now know that Obama always wanted to use his Obamacare bill as a, a gun control and gun confiscation bill. He's made that clear that he's going to try to use mental health professionals and doctors like myself against their patients or against your clients. Uh, he's revealed his plan openly. So if you're a patriot, and let me address, I'm going to address not only the police that are corrupt, the law enforcement that are corrupt, but I'm addressing patriots. Now, if you're a patriot and you admit to your doctor that you have guns, what we're seeing is the merger of health care and law enforcement. So the doctor is going to be forced to report in their files that you have firearms and that you have certain governmental view, views about government. And the Department of Homeland Security is, is saying, what Obama is saying is that they're going to have access to your health records. Um, so patriotism is being labeled as a mental disorder. Uh, so my the time has come for me to give you direct executive advice. Lie to the doctors. Lie to the teachers lie to the police, lie to the judges, lie to the IRS. You're at war. The government has declared war on good Americans. Stop cooperating with them. Obama and Congress have declared war on you, and Obama has declared the U.S. a battlefield. Obama considers gun owners to be enemy insurgents, so you need to stop cooperating with their tyranny. Uh, if somebody was going to come to your, your house and rape you or step on, stomp on your throat, would you help them to do it? 
No, you need to stop giving these people correct information and you need to stop helping them to abuse you. So if they're going to use, you see, Obama's coming right out and saying, okay, when, whatever you say to your doctor can and will be held, uh, it can and will be used against you in a court of law. Uh, well, it's not a court of law. It's just that you're going to have some DHS uh, people make the call. You're not even going to be tried. You're just going to be found guilty. Um, if that's the case, then it's time for you to lie. Don't tell your doctors the truth. Don't ever give your doctors your correct home address. Put a fake address on there. That's their problem. Don't give uh, people your home address that work for the government. Um, don't give the IRS your correct home address. You know, don't help them hurt you. Now, on the offensive side of things, do not riot. Don't riot. Don't destroy government property. Yes, they have declared war on you, but they haven't taken the first shot yet. They haven't started going door to door like they did in Katrina. Yeah, but if they do try to do Katrina-style Katrina gun ban again, your orders will be to execute those officers. And I'll talk about that and how that's the loving and compassionate thing further on. Do not destroy government property or harm any government employees unless they attack you. Do not be offensive, then defend yourself if they are. Do not harm any of these government criminals. Um, as a leader, if you back me up, I will eventually get these people behind bars. I will help and other leaders will help me. We'll get them into jail. Uh, but you can protect yourselves and you can lie to them. You have a legal right to, to use deception as a strategy in war. Uh, because, uh, as I said, every one of your words is going to be held against you. Now, as far as the police that are corrupt, if you're a police officer and you're committed to going against the uh, the, the, the people of this country and you're, uh, and you're in the military and you're willing to go along with gun confiscation orders, you know, um, you are Americans and you need to start acting like it. Because if you don't, like I said, you're going to get yourselves killed. You're the ones that are calling for violence when you go around uh, abusing citizens. You're the ones that are a disgrace to our country. And I'm including you federal agents that are getting fat paychecks to hurt Americans. You're getting paid to abuse American people. Uh, you're the DSA, DHS and TSA. Um, the golden rule, the golden rule is the Bill of Rights. And you want us to treat you a certain way, um, but you want to treat us a different way. And that's not going to work anymore. And as governor of Nevada, I'm going to throw down an iron fist on corrupt law enforcement that are abusive. Uh, the day is coming when I'm going to hear a different news story. I actually already know this family. I know at least one of these families. But I'm going to hear a news story, and it's going to be a different story. The police will have raided another home of an innocent uh, gun owners. Uh, but the outcome is going to be different this time. This time when the police go in, these gun owners, when they were waiting for the raid, and they had set up an ambush in their household for these SWAT team members. So when the SWAT team came in, uh, they were uh, essentially slaughtered, and uh, they had ambushed the traders. So the gun owners were waiting for them. Um, you know, the police may have been SWAT team members, and they may have been strong and bold and arrogant. Uh, they were tribal in their loyalty to one another. Uh, serving as police, though, had validated their worst psychological characteristics for which they were well paid by a criminal government. In other words, law enforcement, a lot of people are going into law enforcement as they did in Nazi Germany because it, uh, it validates their worst traits as uh, sadists. Uh, the police in this story didn't have a search warrant signed by a judge. They simply had a record of a gun registration and a, doc and a report from a doctor. Uh, they thought this would be another successful raid but it became their own personal house of horrors. Uh, the police were executed by these gun owners, this family of gun owners, and the gun owners were later vindicated because the judge was forced to rule that the raid was indeed illegal, and the police had endangered themselves, and the uh, gun owners were simply acting in self-defense. So this news story that I just described to you is coming, and when I read that story, and, I, and it's a headline in Drudge Report, I'm not going to cheer, I'm not going to cry, and I'm just going to witness the justice there. If the police are going to raid houses of innocent people night after night, day after day, as they did in Katrina, I say execute them. I say make them pay for their injustice, because if in this government, this police state,
the more corrupt the police are, the more protected and rewarded they are. So we the people must now bear the burden for correcting the American traitors who have taken over law enforcement across this nation. And these are just Americans. Remember that. They're, it's not like the police aren't God. I and mean, They wish they were. These corrupt police are psycho. Uh, these federal agents, are, they're not God. They're just, we're equals. When I was in the military, um, I was... Uh, I. I was in disagreement with the way they treated uh, soldiers that had injuries. So um, I had to uh, basically argue. And at one point I was arguing with a military lawyer. And I said, my name's David. Uh, what's your name? And he kept calling me private. I said, I said no, you can call me David because we're equals. And uh, I'm going to call you by your first name too. Um, and he got to the point where he was yelling and screaming at me be and eventually hung up on me before. Uh, right after saying, we are not equals. Well, that's false. The truth is, is that as human beings, we're all equals and we all have un unalienable rights. And so it's fraudulent. It's fraudulent whenever a police officer acts as if they have power over you, over, over your life. Now, I stand with the people and I stand with the poor who suffer police brutality every day across this nation who can't afford attorneys to go and attack those governments or in, in the courtroom because they don't have the money or the resources to file the lawsuits and the government has endless funds to defend itself because the government uses taxpayer money to uh, protect these uh, crime, criminals in law enforcement. One of the things I want you to realize is that now when you're dealing with the TSA, when you're dealing with military or illegal checkpoints with police, you know, eventually what they want to do is set up checkpoints where they're going to pull you over or they're going to stop all the traffic and they're not going to give a damn if you need to take a whiz or you're late for work. You're going to have to sit through that checkpoint while they go and identify the gun owners. And uh, you're going to have to decide and be prepared to defend yourself right then and there. You're going to be arrested. In this, in this uh, coming police state, the journey is the destination. And uh, what I mean by that is you've got to be willing to go the rounds wherever you go now. It's time to be ready for a fight. I'm ready right now to fight to the death for your freedom. I'm ready right now to go to jail for the rest of my life for your freedom. I'm ready to go and be tried and executed right now for your freedom. I'm ready to be tortured to death for your freedom. What are you willing to do for your own freedom, Americans? Uh, you have to be prepared to, to defend yourself from this government at any moment. When are you ready? That when, when I was in the military, they say, ask you if you were ready. And the answer is always ready. Uh, you must always be armed and have a video camera. I've talked about camera gun crews because of the crimes of the police. As you record police, you have to be armed to defend yourself against the police if they try to stop you from recording. Um, it's time for people to to be ready to strike back at this illegitimate government. You have to rise up, Americans. You have to rise up and be adult men and women. So you have to carry a gun and a camera at all times. And uh, you should go in groups if you're going to stand up to these police because you, can, you have a legal right to disarm them if they are uh, acting illegally. And um, if they won't surrender their arms, then you have a right to, to engage them. And uh, it will become a death struggle. Now, a lot of people think you need a sec uh, the Bill of Rights to have a Second Amendment right. You know, you don't need a piece of paper like the Constitution to be free. You were born free. And uh, the Bill of Rights in some way in the Constitution do us a disservice because they seem to codify or, and therefore limit the number of rights that we have as if that's the code. And if it's not in the code, then it doesn't exist. Now, that's not true. That's, that's why some of our founding parents didn't even want to have a Bill of Rights. They just wanted to say the government can do these things and anything else that's not listed here, the government can't touch it. And uh, so that's kind of the, the downside to having a Bill of Rights. But you don't need a Bill of Rights. You don't even need a Second Amendment uh, to tell you that you have a right to defend yourselves. Uh, those papers are merely symbols of a reality that pre-existed them. Freedom is an eternal principle, an eternal reality. The tyranny is uh, an eternal fraud. Now, I want to requote Alexander Solzhenitsyn's uh, uh, the quote about what it was like to be in a Russian gulag. So that's a Russian concentration camp. 
And, and then I want to comment on that. He said, and how we burned in the camps later thinking, what would things have been like if every security operative, when he went out at night to make an arrest, had been uncertain whether he would return alive and had to say goodbye to his family? Or if during periods of mass arrests, as for example in Leningrad, when they arrested a quarter of the entire city, people had not simply sat there in their lairs, paling with terror at every bang on the downstairs door and at every step of the staircase, but had understood that they had nothing to lose and had boldly set up in the downstairs hall an ambush of half a dozen people with axes, hammers, pokers, or whatever else was at hand. The organs would have quickly have suffered a shortage of officers and transport, and notwithstanding all of Stalin's thirst, the cursed machine would have ground to a halt if, if we didn't love freedom enough, and even more, we have had had no awareness of the real situation. We purely and simply deserved everything that happened afterwards. Okay, so so he's talking about an ambush, uh, and I can tell you right now, if if there was door to door gun confiscation, these SWAT teams are really arrogant, tough guys, and if you killed one of them, even if you lost your life in the process. They'd be done for the night. That would be that would that would make national headlines, and they'd be done for the night. And you need to take if you're going to go down uh, in a shooting fight with these uh, criminals in our government, you, you need to take some of them with you, and you need to be prepared for people to break in your door because the gun raids are going to increase, and they're going to use medical records now. So so initially, the raids are not going to be as frequent. They're going to be more sporadic, and they're going to be based on medical records. So a doctor makes a report. DHS can immediately swoop in and scan those reports, and then they just take it from there. It's not like the doctor is going to rat you out, but it is kind of a nanny state society that if the doctor fills out an innocuous report on some computer and it notes that you have a gun and you have, have, are a patriot, then, then if they see any mental health history attached to that, then they will use that to get a, an illegal warrant to come after you, okay? So you've got to be ready. And now... But Solzhenitsyn is saying that we need to be prepared to ambush uh, corrupt police and SWAT teams that try to enter our homes. What's he really saying? The bottom line is that Alexander is saying that when enough police are dead, then they will go back to following the Constitution and respecting the people. And that's what I say. If the cops and the police and the law enforcement of, this, of all the levels of government are going to become corrupt and they're going to kill people and uh, raid their homes, then... Look, they've already taken all of our wealth. America's bankrupt. They've stolen everything from us. And our money clearly has not satisfied or satiated these uh, fiends in the federal government. They've taken all of our money. We can't redeem the land with money anymore. Um, and, and, and so there's only two ways you can redeem your freedom, and that is with money or blood. And, and so if what they're saying is they're forcing us as Americans into a position where blood is the only option because we have no money left. They've stolen it all. And I will come out with a message to the central bankers after this message. Um, so what I'm saying is uh, if the police are going to violate the Constitution in a grand scale across this nation, when enough of the police are dead, then they will go back to following the Constitution and respecting the rights of the people. And to you police, you police who are abusing and murdering American citizens, you're Americans. And you're putting yourselves in danger every time you violate the Constitution. And if you die violating the rights of innocent citizens, uh, you have received your just reward. Uh, you police, you federal agents, you DHS, you TSA, you who serve this Obama, this tyrant, Knowing that you're breaking the law to get a paycheck and fat benefits and retirement, you will eventually begin to die. And I will have no compassion for you. I will not feel sorrow for you or your families. Your execution by the people will be your final paycheck. So if you want this fight, suck it up, soak it up, and bring it on. You know, the federal police are just Americans. And today, Americans who happen to be police, you know, they just think that they're above the laws, that they want to force down our throats. And it's time for us to put them back in their place. We will put the police in their place and then the judges. Uh, we also got to re-educate our judges regarding the Constitution because they're paid by the government to uh, deny us justice. 
and the judges and lawyers of the government are ignorant of the true principles of freedom. American gun owners, it's time to prepare yourselves to repel the raids of SWAT teams. Learn their tactics, I'll learn their weapons, and when they come, make them wish they'd never taken the job. Uh, the other thing that uh, eventually you'll, you'll learn about, which is much easier, which is uh, checkpoints. If, um, if you have to militarily engage a checkpoint, that's not going to be actually very difficult. I mean, they can act tough, but if somebody's sitting out at a checkpoint checking cars, um, the vectors of fire around them are pretty much 360 degrees. So um, if you're stupid enough as a police officer to confiscate guns at a checkpoint, just realize that you're a sitting duck to be shot. And Americans will shoot you because the moment you start taking their family mess members hostage for Obama, um, you're going to have people hunting you down and people who have no rhyme or reason. See, I'm a rational man and I'll sit here and reason with you and talk with you and, and I'll have a treaty with you. But I'm going to no negotiate for all the Americans who can't speak up for themselves and who don't have good uh, communication skills are good voices, but they have fire in their bellies and they're coming for you if uh, they will respond and they will hear the call. This is not going to be like North Korea. This is not going to be like Nazi Germany or, or communist Russia or China. Americans will shed your blood. We are a bloodthirsty people and uh, that's why we're used by the globalists in wars all over the land. It's not because we sit down and the people who support me, uh, they're not limp, uh, they're not weak liberals. You know, like all these liberals that support gun confiscation, are they going to come out and actually confiscate those guns? I'd like to see that. The people who support me, the gun owners of the Americas uh, of America, are the people who actually work and actually fight the wars. They have jobs, they work hard, and they create things. That's what gun owners are like. I mean, they they are willing to defend themselves and take care of themselves. So, um. I want to say one final word to you Americans. You are forewarned. You are, have been forewarned of the hell that will be unleashed on you if you don't aren't ready to respond. Because when these SWAT teams come, you need to be ready to send them to hell.